QuickBooks Online. Products and services list item list. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Using the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Selecting the cog drop down, noting that we're in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. We may be toggling back and forth between the two views so you can see where things are located in each of them. Duplicating tabs as we do every time to put reports in, right click on the tab up top duplicate it right click the tab again and duplicate it again as the tab to the right is thinking we're going to tab to the left go down to the reports at the left and then open the balance sheet as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left open up the profit and loss income statement p l in other words closing up the hamburger the ham boogie and scrolling up with the range change from 010122 tab 12 31 22 tab run it to refresh it and then tab to the left and we want to close the ham boogie scroll up ranges they are changing from 010122 to 12 31 22 tab run it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time back to the tab to the left we've been looking at our lists just a quick recap here remember that the normal day-to-day -day transactions into the system will typically be done with the plus button or this is one way you could find the normal forms that enter the financial transactions that create the financial statements most of these forms having an impact on at least two accounts every time you do that data input our goal is to set up the system to do the data input in these forms as easily as possible and allow them to create the financial statements from them as easily as possible as well as to be able to communicate with the customers vendors and employees about those financial transactions smoothly so the underlying foundational items to do that will be the lists that we typically do when we first set up the account which includes the general ledger uh, we talked about last time. The other major list are gonna be the products and services, sometimes called items. If you're coming from the desktop version of the software, then items uh, is, is gonna be a term that you'll probably still hear uh, in accounting terminology, as well as in QuickBooks Online, uh, possibly primarily or in large part due to the long use of you know the desktop software that use that here we got the products and services so uh notice that as we enter those we could find them in the cog drop down and we could go to lists products and services so that's one way you can get there you can also see that that took us on the left hand side to the sales tab and then within the sales tab it's in products and services that kind of makes sense because the sales tax re tab represents what i would call you know the customer cycle and the things that we're selling are the lists the products and services if i was to go to the business view with a drop down up top switching to the business view we would select and find the products and services on the left hand side in the get pay and pay area and then uh, we would go into the get pay the customer center in essence and then the product services on down below which you might hear called say basically items inventory and service items in normal kind of language as well now note that as you do the data input forms if i hit the plus button up top 
the items are going to be definitely useful when we enter an invoice and a sales receipt. Those are going to be the normal forms used to record revenue. And if there's uh, invo if there's inventory that we have to deal with as well, then when we buy the inventory with an expense a check or bill form, then they can also be used on that side as well on the purchasing side of things. So let's take a quick look at when the items will be applicable on our flowchart. So I'm jumping over just to a flowchart. This is the desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at the icons within the flow of items to see how setting up the inventory items and service items will be important. Mainly we're focusing on the customer side of things, the customer cycle, which at the end of the day, we hope will result in an increase to our checking account for goods and services that we provided to the customer. Now you'll recall that there's many different ways that we might set up the cycle here, depending on the type of industry. So most common, for example, if we're just getting paid from gig work, from YouTube, for example, or from Amazon, and, and we're just getting money going into our checking account, we record it revenue after we receive it in our checking account, we can basically use the bank feeds and say the deposit form possibly to record those transactions. In that case, then we're not actually using the form designed to record sales transactions. So we're losing a little bit of the detail, but it could be a useful strategy if you have a, an, an industry or a business model where that can be applicable. And so we'll just use the deposit form to record the revenue. And we don't even really need items uh, in that case because the revenue, we just know it came from the platform of YouTube or whatever. Uh, if, for example, we're selling stuff at a cash register, however, a food truck or a restaurant or a store of some kind, then we're going to need the items to be able to be entered as easy as possible. So if someone comes up to us and says, hey, here's a bunch of items that I have, we can put it into the system. This would be a similar process if, for example, you're at a grocery store and you're doing a self-checkout or you're going to a checker at the grocery store, we need to be have the system be set up so the data input is so easy that someone who's even buying the groceries can basically do the process and the system is actually recording that somewhat complex transaction that is done through the proper setup of the items the inventory items and uh, the service items that we'll take a look at now and then we could then have a full accrual process where we are buying the I'm, I'm sorry where we are having an invoice which will increase the accounts receivable. And at that point in time, similar kind of process here. We want to make sure that we have our items set up so that the inventory items or the, the data input of the invoice is as easy as possible. Now note, you might be on this side of things with an invoice more on like a job cost system. In other words, if you're at a cash register and someone's coming up and you work at Jiffy Lube or something like that, and you just have oil exchanges or rotating the tires, then of course you want to have those things in place uh, at the register. But if you're at uh, something where you're invoicing, it's likely that you do the work first. You might be in a bookkeeping service, a law firm, which it's more likely in those cases that you just charge hourly service. You might just say, well, I worked so many hours and you can set up items based on hourly service. So for example, you might have you might have uh, a partnership is common in those kind of businesses. And then the staff works for the partners or works for jobs for the partners. So you might bill out their hours based on who's doing the work and then have a billable rate on it. But you also want to think about a model possibly if you can to try to say, I'm going to charge based on what I'm doing. So if it's bookkeeping, you might want to say, I'm going to say if there's so many transactions that I've recorded this month, and it's between a certain range, I'm going to charge you this much. This is how much I charge per so many transactions for monthly recording or monthly bookkeeping. The more you can do that, the easier it will be for your bookkeeping system. It can be quite agonizing to track your hours and try to see whether or not your hours were were optimally used or if you if you were tired during that time or something like that, you were taking longer than normal and so on as you're tracking the hours. The more you can basically do your own billing cycle in such a way that maybe you're not reliant on just uh, hourly tracking, but r r rather you, you have estimated how much time it takes to do certain jobs. That is something that might be worth taking into consideration. 
So to set these up properly then, to make them record properly, we have to enter the items. Now also, if you have inventory, inventory is gonna span the vendor side, purchasing side, and the customer side. And we have the same issue with inventory we've talked about a couple times. One, you might do the easiest inventory method, which is you're just gonna expense the inventory when you purchase it, which means that, uh, that you're, you're just gonna expense it when you purchase it and the item isn't gonna have as much of a use in that case because you're not tracking the inventory on a perpetual inventory method system. You're just gonna record it into cost of goods sold when you purchase it and possibly then you're gonna turn around and invoice someone quickly, possibly in custom kind of jobs where you're buying things specifically for a particular job and that could work uh, in that case. Or if you're tracking inventory, then the question is, do you track it within the QuickBooks system on a perpetual inventory system or outside of it on a periodic inventory system? If you're tracking outside of the system on a periodic inventory system, then the items that you set up don't necessarily need then to track the units of inventory because you're just gonna record them as an increase to the inventory account and look at the units of inventory outside in QuickBooks or something like that. And then possibly you do a physical count daily, weekly, monthly, and make a periodic adjustment, lowering inventory, recording the cost of goods sold periodically based on that physical count. Or the full service inventory system that you're tracking within QuickBooks means that you have to set up the items so that when you purchase the items, possibly with a purchase order to uh, the bill, it's going to increase not only the inventory account, but also the the units, the sub ledger by item. And then when you sell it, it's going to decrease the inventory and record the sales. That means that you have to use the invoices and the sales receipts on the sales side of things. Okay, so let's go back on over. We can see that here. If I hit the plus button and I was to go to uh, an invoice, then we could see that we have our items down here. These are gonna be the items that are set up. If this is set up properly, then it's quite easy to populate my information into the system. And if we're buying inventory, we can also see that on the purchase orders and the bills. So if I go into a bill as well as a check and an expense form, there's gonna be your categories down, down below and not here in the items category down below. We want these to be as easy as possible to be populating. So how do we do that? Let's go into the items. I'm gonna close this back out. I'm gonna go back to the accountant view because that's my preferred view personally, cog dropdown, accountant view. And then I'm gonna go into the sales on the left-hand side and then the products and services tab up top. Closing this out. And so this is our items. Now, when you first set up the company file, you might have items that you've set up in your prior accounting system and you might be able to upload uh, your items here. So you've got, you've got your new or you've got your import. So we might talk about that more in the second half or other course when we start the new company file or else you can make a new one at a time. And the more button, you've got the categories that you can manage categories and you can run a report. The categories are gonna be these subcategories within the items. So you can kind of group your items in subcategories. So for example, if you're selling guitars and then basses and then drums, you can put them into a subcategory possibly to easier or more easily sort that information. If we're gonna make a new item, I can select a new item here. The baseline would be, it's either gonna be an inventory item, a non-inventory item, a service item, or we can set up bundles of items. So as they say here, the products you buy and sell and, and that you track are up top. That's the inventory item. That means that you're tracking inventory on a perpetual inventory method. That's the most complex item to be dealing with. It's going to have the purchase side and the expense side of things and be tracking the units of inventory, not just the dollar amounts of the inventory. You might have the non-inventory products you buy and or sell, but don't need or can't track quantities of, for example, nuts and bolts used in an installation. So now you're saying maybe it's an inventory type of item that you're using, but they're so small in units possibly that you're not gonna be 
uh, tracking them in the same kind of uh, tracking method as with the inventory items. So it would be tracked similar kind of like to a service item in that case then. And then we've got the services, services that you provide to customers, for example, landscaping or tax preparation services, meaning you want to be able to group them on the sales items uh, in terms of your sales prices and stuff on the invoices and sales receipts, but you're not gonna have to track the increases and decreases in the inventory and sub, sub uh, amounts of inventory on a sub ledger. Bundles, a collection of products or services uh, that you sell together, for example, a gift basket or fruit, cheese, and wine. So once you've set up your, your inventory, possibly you can use those inventory items to, to create a bundle, a package kind of situation. So let's take a look at some of these just to look at the differences in the data input. If I just stroll through the, the uh, inventory, let's just make one as we go. I'll say this is inventory one, and I'm going to copy that. I'm not going to put an SKU number here. You could put an image of it, which can actually be quite useful if you have a larger company so that people can go in here and actually see the unit of inventory. So it's actually quite nice to take a picture of it if, you've, if you have a bigger company and you have bit different people dealing with it to identify what you're looking at. You can then say this is going to be inventory item. I'll say test inventory category. I'm just going to put and we'll add that as a category and then the quantity on hand represents the quantity that we first start out with usually you're not going to add a quantity on hand because you're going to be putting the quantity on hand when you buy them but uh, if this is the first time you, you you're entering this system or you're just starting to enter data into the system from a prior accounting system you might use that we'll talk about that in the second part of the course or other course when we get into the uh starting a new company file now i'm just going to choose the beginning of the month you have to pick a date here so i'm just going to choose the beginning of the month reorder point at what point do you want like a reminder for them to order again zero if you want to go all the way down to zero but if you want it to go to a low point like five or something and then tell me to get another one or something like that the inventory account represents the account that will be impacted when you buy the inventory with a bill and or or check or expense form and when you sell the inventory, it'll decrease with an invoice or sales receipt. And then the description, that's gonna be shown on the uh, description on the forms, and that would be invoices, bills, sale expense forms. The sales price, I'm just gonna put for like 250. The sale of product account is the default sales account that it's going to, the income statement account that will be impacted when we create an invoice or sales receipt. Taxation. Remember that the items are the primary thing to determine whether or not sales tax will be applicable. So, so to deal with the sales tax, we talked about in a prior presentation, you first got to think you got to turn on the sales tax, which will differ by location, depending so on your state in the United States. And then the, then the products and services will determine whether or not it be taxable or not. So you can browse the items here or if you think it's a taxable item, you could default it to a taxable item. If it's not taxable, you could tell it to not be taxable. And then the third component, remember, is that the customer uh, might have a, a different location, which might change the tax if you have different locations, and they might not be taxable. So you could say that that particular customer isn't taxable, even though they're buying something that the item would normally say is a taxable item. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to save that as taxable. The purchase information, the description that's going to happen on the purchase side, oftentimes it's the same. So on the invoices and sales receipt, the description is going to be the same as on the when I purchase it with a bill or expense form. Let's say it costs $100 and cost to goods sold represents the expense account that will be impacted when I sell uh, the item. And then the vendor preference if i have a preferred vendor i can pick a vendor or set up a vendor and so that'll be the preferred vendor so we could save that and just note if i go down here there's my test item it went into that category scrolling back up let's do another one and say what if it was non-inventory so if it was a non-inventory non-inventory one number one and i'll copy that 
no SKU category. I'm going to go into the same test category. This is going to be the description. Let's say this is going to sell for, uh, what did I say, 210, let's say this time. And this time it's going into a service. The service income account is what it's picking here. So we'll keep it in service item. But note, it's it's acting kind of like it's a service item here, even though it's in, so you might actually change this to the sale of a product or the sale. You might have another account for a non tracked inventory item, but it's acting kind of like a service item because we're not tracking the inventory on it. So the data input similar to a service item. And then if it's taxable, notice in the United States, a lot of times a service item isn't taxable. So maybe this is a nice way to say, hey, look, it's still a taxable item because it's an inventory item, even though we're not tracking the inventory uh, in, in, in the system. So I'm going to say done here. So there we have. So I'm going to say the tax is not, it is taxable. I'll keep it at that. And so that's going to be it. Notice the purchase information. So I purchased this products from a vendor. So you can decide whether or not you're going to be adding the purchase information. Remember, you're not tracking the information on inventory. So you may or may not decide to be adding it, you know, on the purchase side of things. So I mean, I could put it here. Let's say it costs, uh, let's say it costs $50. And then the side of the account that it's going to go to, they're putting it straight to purchases. You might put it to cost of goods sold. Notice what it's not doing is going to the inventory account because we're not tracking the inventory account on a perpetual inventory system. Uh, you could try to use this, this kind of uh, method, the non inventory items, if you're tracking on a sub ledger to kind of record them possibly in, in inventory, and then make a periodic adjustment to decrease inventory uh, based on your sub ledger. Let's save and close it. So that shows up down here. And then if I go back up top and I say new, let's take a look at the service item. So I'm going to call this service one service one and copy that. I'm not going to do an SKU category. Let's put it into our category that we've been setting up. Description is going to be service one sales price. Let's just say is 140. Now it's going into the service income account, the income account impacted when we create an invoice or sales receipt. This time I'm going to say it's a service item. Therefore, let's say it's not taxable for sales tax purposes done. And I'm generally do not have any purchase information down here for a service item because it's a service item. And so no, no bills that are going to be inputted with it. So if I scroll down, there is that. And then if I go to a bundle, just to round it out on a bundle, I'll call it bundle one. You've got the description, the name. I'm just going to say that's the description and display bundle components uh, when printing or, or sending information. So do you want the added detail on the bundle here or not? Or do you want it just to show up as a bundle? And then if I hit the drop down, we can have our bundle here. Let's say that this is going to be inventory. Let's say I've got, I've got our yeah, I got our test inventory item. Let's say we got one of those or two of those. And then I've got our service item here. And so let's say we've got one of those, or let's say two of those, right? So I got two of those, 12 of those. Okay. So those are the bundles. I'm just going to close this one out. And then, so now let's just think about how we might populate this information into say an invoice, for example, uh, we then uh, if I hit the, the hamburger up top, if it was an inventory item, then the next thing we might do is purchase the inventory. So the inventory purchasing, we have the bills and let's say this is going to go from AAA. And let's say that we're going to be purchasing one of those inventory item ones, inventory item ones. What did I call it? I N V inventory item. And then we're not going to have a category down here now because I'm not just going to apply it to an account. I'm going to track the items because I'm actually going to be having an inventory item that I'm going to track. And this is going to be inventory item one. So the inventory item. 
and let's say we buy you know 10 of those for example now it will populate for us automatically this will increase the accounts payable because it's a bill and it will increase the inventory as well as the inventory subledger item so if i save and close that save and close and we go to here and say run it our major focus then is here on the inventory asset so if i go into the inventory asset now we've got our inventory item on that has gone up now it's also important that i have a sub ledger tracking the units of inventory so i'm going to go to the tab to the right right click on it duplicate it and then open up another report by going to the reports on the left hand side and then go into let's i'm just going to type in inventory valuation summary and and it didn't go it didn't go just impacted on the surface so that's from star wars 31 22 okay so then there we've so there we have it so the total's at 159625 and so so hold on a second yeah one there it is so then if i go back on over so then if i created an, a a now, now notice the other items i'm not tracking the inventory so if i was to purchase that non-inventory part it's not going to be increasing you know the inventory account so then if i was to sell items over here let's make an invoice and let's sell some of them let's make this customer bbb and i'm just going to set up a new customer and then we had our items down below we had inventory item so there's our inventory item we could sell let's say we sold two of those it's taxable notice it's taxable because it was told that it's taxable by the items taxes set up and the inventory item said it was taxable with regards to sales tax let's say we had a service item one as well let's say we had two of those notice how easily it populates over here so if, if i was to do this at a, at a register or have someone do it, the billing process they should be able to populate it fairly quickly and then we had like a non-inventory item let's just keep one of those and it's taxable because it's an inventory item we're saying even though we're not tracking it in the same way as these items so what would this do it's an invoice it's going to increase the accounts receivable 104680 and the other side's going to go to revenue but only for the 990 the sales tax is being calculated how does it know to calculate the sales tax because these two are checked off those two are checked off automatically because the item uh, is telling us that it's subject to tax and the sales tax had already been turned on which we talked about how to do in a prior presentation and this customer is not defaulting as not taxable the customer is normally taxable or will follow along with the tax rules applied by the item generally and might so there is that and then also the inventory is going to be uh going down for the amount told by the system not the 500 but only for this one item that actually tracks the inventory and for the amount told by the by the item that we set up but i think we said 100 so it'd be 200 dollars and then and then also the sub ledgers uh the cost of goods sold will be impacted by that same amount and the sub ledgers will be impacted for the inventory giving us the units of inventory not just the amount for that one line item these two don't have inventory tracking turned on in the system so let's save it and close it and check that out notice that's a quite a detailed transaction that is very easy to do the data input for because the chart of accounts is set up properly and and the items are set up properly or the service and inventories uh items so if i go into the accounts receivable now we can see that one for the full amount bbb the other side if i go back and go to my income statement and run the income statement to refresh it then we have it going to various kind of income statement accounts here because we had different items in there let's take a look at the one related to the that has the inventory that we sold which is in the products and services right here so if i scroll down notice that these two the 500 and the 210 are in there but not the service item so it's going line by line because the service item is going to the service income line account 
And so, but if I was to add all three up, it would come up to 990 that got recorded. The difference going to the sales tax, scrolling back, back to the prior tab. And then in the sales tax, that's a liability account. So in the liabilities, you got it broken out by location. I think we're in California for this example. So there's the sales tax and going back up, we've got the inventory going down now with the sales side of things because we're tracking that one inventory line item on a perpetual inventory system going into the inventory we can see it goes down by 200 an amount not included on the invoice an amount only tied to this one line item because these two don't have inventory related to them going back uh, or closing this out and then going back again the other side going to the income statement, profit and loss, running it. And that goes to the cost of goods sold. Boom. And we see that 200 here as well. And then back. And then also this inventory line item is being tracked not only by dollar amount on the balance sheet, but by unit in the sub ledger. And if I run that one again, you can see now the inventory went down by the two items that we sold. And this 139625 should tie out to what is here on the balance sheet. All that's happening pretty automatically, even though it's quite complex a transaction because the chart of accounts have been set up properly and the items have been set up properly, making the data input just simple data input. That's the goal. Now, I think we talked about both, the, both views here. So if I went to the cog dropdown in the business view, uh, we've been working mainly in the the products and services. So that's un, under the get paid and pay tab under this view. And then products and services down here. Obviously the plus button, still same location. And the reports are under the business overview and the reports.